the point of the story for everyone listening is I wanted it. I made up my mind that I wanted something that was bigger than everybody else around me thought I could have. That's an entrepreneurial dream. And when everyone tells you no, you know you're on the right path. So why did people give up on their dreams and what made you not to? I didn't have any friends. I had nobody telling me, because I didn't talk to people, what I could and couldn't do. I can't be the one to pitch me. I need to hire somebody. So I hired a woman named Lindsay Maxwell from England. And she talked a lot like this. And she would get on the phone and say, oh, you must see Forbes Roddy. She's the most talented actress. She's got, baby girl, I was Lindsay Maxwell. You were Lindsay. <laughs> I couldn't hire somebody. I, and I'm a great pitcher. I get on the phone every day. I got movies and televisions and commercials. And you want to talk about imposter syndrome? I was an imposter. And it worked. <laughs> so how to break through to the next level? Write, to, yeah. write, this on, write this on your mirror and look at it every morning. You're going to die anyway, so who the fuck cares? <laughs> and one of the problems in life, this fear of success, comes from when you were a kid, somewhere you did something and somebody squished a dream. Now you are letting your four-year-old drive your car today? Well, that seems like a stupid idea, but you would think you have no choice. You have a choice. The other beautiful thing that happened was for many years, I didn't like me. I was angry at me, I was lonely, I had, I had an abusive relationship that I stayed in because you get what you tolerate. Um, and I wanted to be in love. And I had to heal me enough to be attractive enough to somebody else for them to love me. Now what's cool about this is that the way that this man loves me is exactly what I want and now feel that I deserve. Hello, it's Natalia and welcome to Beehive Podcast, the place where insightful conversations with the most extraordinary people take place. Each episode is an opportunity to explore my guests' personal journeys, lifestyle choices and aspects of their personal success formula. Join me by subscribing now and enjoy the listen. Watch this. Audio Jungle. Let's give it up for Forbes Riley. The reason you don't have what you want is you don't know what it is. I've grossed $2.5 billion by tweaking people's pitches on infomercials. You hear things differently than I do. I hear money every time somebody talks. I hear enrollment, engagement. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and today we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. She's got me, <laughs> she's got me working out of, what are these called? It's called a spin gym. She launched her multi-million dollar company by mortgaging her house and her kids' education fund. She knew it was gonna happen. I think pitch is everything. I don't care what kind of product that you've got. If you don't know how to pitch or articulate it, you will go nowhere. I coach CEOs of Fortune 100 companies who have stood there and told me, Forbes, you pitch my company better than my marketing team. You don't get to sit home and wait for the phone to ring. No, it doesn't really work that way. You write down action steps. You get a mentor. You find someone who's done what you've done and you ask them how they did it. If you dream it and you hold it to be true, you keep driving towards that. You keep talking about that dream and actually you keep taking action. And then one day you're like, oh my God, how did I do that? I started out as an actress in Hollywood and a TV host, everything from the X Games to my own talk show. And about 20 years ago, I took the entrepreneurial route. I ended up on home shopping. I'm tired of seeing women suffer. I grew up heavy my whole life. My mom was 260 pounds and she was miserable. You want to be yourself. I appreciate that you want your family, that you want to be glamorous and gorgeous and fun and that people tell you that you're wonderful, don't you? You want all those things. Okay, I can't be the one to tell you that. You need to be the one to own that. And that's where your success lies. When someone says to you, what do you do? They do not care what you do. <gasps> they don't? No, they care what you can do for them. It's never the resources. It's not your time or your money. Billionaires have no more time than you and I have. They have resourcefulness. They have a deep down drive. And if I can empower you to do that, you can have everything you want. Let me make your life explode. I don't want to change it. I don't want to transform it. I want to make it the best version of you possible. Pitching to the pitch queen, you know, this is a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on me. Yeah, let's have some fun. <laughs> How did it all start for you? You know what? It all started because I was an ugly, awkward, goofy little girl who... <laughs> Just, no, I, well, I just wanted more. And you know, it's funny, you just laughed a little bit. And that is one reason that I teach and I preach at the moment, because I do think that giving hope to other people is probably one of the best uses of my time. 
I didn't grow up having a whole lot of hope. I was very smart intellectually, but I was a very lonely, awkward, literally ugly kid. Now you laughed because as a beautiful woman, I don't know when you became beautiful. Were you always cute as a little girl? No, we all go through the phase. <laughs> well, no, no, okay. this, mine wasn't a phase. Mine was a phase that lasted my entire school time. And, and, I, and I will show this to you because I think it's an important thing. People go, wait, Forbes, look at you now. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. That's great. Well, then I need to show it in a picture. And again, I'm going to share my screen because what you see now, I'm 62 years old. This is a work in progress, guys. This is not you in your 20s and 30s who are going, wait a second, how do I do it? So this is me kind of cute when I was littler, except for this thing in my mouth, right? So at eight years old, they put me in a full set of braces, which my eight is a very, you know, but then they put this in my mouth. And this made me talk like this for two years. So nobody wanted to be my friend because I talked really funny. That was the first problem. I couldn't communicate. That's one reason I teach communication. The second is I hit a baseball bat or something and my broke my nose really badly and it became this weird hook nose. I was overweight because fast food came out when I was a girl. My mom was always 260 pounds. I had big frizzy hair long before we had straighteners and all the curling irons and what we have. And then my mm -hmm. father, who was this printer, magician, and inventor who thought I was the beautiful girl in the world, took tons of pictures of me. He just loved me to no end. Uh, he had a terrible accident. He got his hand caught in that printing press. And my entire high school, he was in the hospital. He had 15 different operations. And so I, rather than go to football games or baseball games, I went to the hospital every day to see my dad. Now, when I was growing up, this was pretty. Pretty was straight blonde hair. She had a cute little nose, great teeth, Marsha Brady. Mm -hmm. Natalia, where did you grow up? Well, I was born in Ukraine and grew up in Siberia pretty much. So I am 100% Ukrainian. Do you know that? My, grandpa no. my grandparents are from Kiev and Odessa. So this was what pretty was. When she got hit in the face, and you may not have grown up with this TV series, she didn't go to the prom. Her world ended when she broke her nose. And mm. so I think about the, the impression that's leaves on this little girl. If you've got an ugly nose, you are ugly. So she was like the queen. If she was pretty, I wasn't. And that was reinforced a lot. But here's what happened. Of 16, 15 years old, my mother says, we have no money for college. But she said, but there's this beauty pageant. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, yeah, forget that. Well, we said this in front of my father's doctor. I remember we all became very close. And he said, I'm going to fix your daughter's nose. Now, I don't even know if we really understood what that would do. But one day, a couple of days later, after that little operation, I woke up. I looked in the mirror. And this cute little girl looked back at me. And I had a very weird thought. And I said to my mom, I'm going to enter this pageant because there's a scholarship. I have no choice. And I got a red me down dress. I entered the pageant and I won. And as a 16 year old who had no real skills, don't, I mean, I just, I wanted it. And then I did go to college. That's my mom. Mm -hmm. And I did decide that I wanted to look like the movie stars when I was growing up and I created Forbes Riley. And I will tell you that metamorphosis just, I mean, that's a movie that I'm in at the moment. I mean, it's like, wow, I am living my American dream here. But the, the point of the story for everyone listening is I wanted it. I made up my mind that I wanted something that was bigger than everybody else around me thought I could have. That's an entrepreneurial dream. And when everyone tells you no, you know you're on the right path. And then I took the steps to make it happen. But the, the magic in this was that I saw in my mind movies and TV. I wanted to be James Bond. And I really wanted, I wanted to fly airplanes and scuba dive and go skiing and, and wear sexy clothes. And I wanted, and I would think about it every night. It's all I thought about was this adventurous, amazing life. And it drove me so much that when I graduated college, I had very little money. I had like two grand. I'd just done a project. I did, and I said to my mom, I bought Europe on $20 a day. And I said, I'm going to go see Europe. Like I kept thinking about my movie life and I'm going to tear out every page in this book and come home when I have the cover because I need to live an adventurous life. And when I'm in my eighties, I wanna tell the most amazing story, the most amazing movie of my life. Mm -hmm. And that was my blueprint and my roadmap for my entire life. So why did people give up on their dreams and what made you not to? I didn't have any friends. Now you wanna talk about a strange theory that I've just put this together. It's a little, me. I know thousands of thousands of people. I don't have a family. My parents are both gone for 23 years. I don't have any other family. I didn't grow up with any, I had a sister, but I don't talk to her. She's on our own. It's, that's a strange story. 
Um, I have no cousins, no aunts, no, my parents were only, I I have no family. I had no grandparents. I had nobody telling me because I didn't talk to people what I could and couldn't do. Now, I don't know if I recommend this, but I have been my own coach in my head my entire life. I've talked to myself. I had imaginary friends. I have done very strange things. I don't know how to explain all of this, but most of you chit chat to your girlfriends and tell them all these things. And then you hear, oh, well, I can't do that. Or this boy is doing that. I didn't have those conversations. I never did. And so I just had this in my head, what I wanted to do. Now, it was so crazy about being your own best friend, your own mentor, because who else were you going to turn to that at one day when I'm in New York City and I'm working as an actress and I can't get an agent. I've been in a movie. I got that on my own. I've been in a Broadway play. I got that. I know long stories how I got these. And then I would go to get these agents and they would chase me around the desk long before Me Too was a thing. If you're cute in your 20s, I didn't want to get caught. My mother told me very clearly, she got married, I guess, when she was, she lost her virginity in her late 20s, put the fear of God in my head that if you get pregnant, you're going to ruin everything. And so I didn't date a lot. I was terrified of dating. And so I got a guy chasing me around the desk and I'm like, I'm not going to give that up to some idiot who's like, so I, who, now no one gave me permission to do this. This is a crazy story. You need an agent. Some casting director puts out a breakdown to get actors. So I said, well, screw that. I'm going to open up my own agency. I get a piece of stationery. I write CMA on it. I didn't ask. I didn't say, I don't know how to do this. I just said, let's make it up. How do you do anything with imagination? Mm -hmm. And then I said, I need, I can't be the one to pitch me. I need to hire somebody. So I hired a woman named Lindsay Maxwell from England. And she talked a lot like this. And she would get on the phone and say, oh, you must see Forbes Roddy. She's the most talented actress. She'd be like, baby girl, I was Lindsay Maxwell. You were Lindsay. (laughs) I couldn't hire somebody. And I'm a great pitcher. I get on the phone every day. I got movies and televisions and commercials. And you want to talk about imposter syndrome? I was an imposter. And it worked. (laughs) And I never told anybody about this until recently because I didn't want anyone to catch me. And not that they're going to throw you in jail, but I freaking lied. I'm talking about fake it till you make it. And I did that. And I got it. And I got Broadway shows. and And then it turns out that I really was talented enough to get these things. But have you ever heard this story before? <laughs> this is awesome. You are creative, inventive, and you can't hear no. So. And unstoppable. And now, unstoppable. Well, Natalia, now this is another weird thing. And this is where I have a bit of an issue. Technically, I'm an introvert. As ballsy as I can be, I don't go to a lot of parties. I don't pick up the phone a lot. I don't push myself. And I get very quiet and very shy a lot of the time. So I have had to live my dream in spite of the fact that the little girl inside of me is freaking shaking in her boots. And there's times where I'm like, oh my God. And then there's times I've walked away from opportunities because I just was so scared. So yeah. I've had, so I understand as I'm talking to people, when they say to me, oh, I have a fear of success or a fear, my, you know what my advice is? Do it anyway. Do, do, if it you, anyway. do it anyway. If you want something, do it anyway. And I've lived my entire life this way. And I can give you a hundred examples. I'm working on a, a book idea right now because I want people to hear this. I mean, the wackiest of ideas. I just, I had no conventional friends to talk to. I never had a job. I never sat in an office cubicle because I could never deal with someone telling me what to do. That would never work. And here's how outrageous that led. I had a couple of dreams. One of my dreams was to dance, was to be on Broadway, be a Broadway star. That sounds wonderful, right? But I can't sing. I have no singing ability whatsoever. It's embarrassing, but I could dance. So Mm -hmm. one day I took myself to Club Med. Club Med is an all-inclusive resort. It's in the 1980s. And what they do for entertainment is all the people who work there, the people who make the food, who run the sports, they have to lip sync to do the entertainment. They, they never, it's the most bizarre thing. So imagine this, I'm sitting there, I'm in my mid twenties and the, the musical, a chorus line, one of my favorite musicals, I'm looking on stage and they're doing it, but they're lip syncing it and they're dancing. And I'm like, oh my God, I wanted that character. I don't want to do that just once. I want to play that character, but I don't have to lip sync. And I go to the guy and say, how can I get this? He's like, you have to work here. How do you get a job here? Well, yeah, guys in New York might hire you. And I'm like, Darn, all right. So I go get this. I knock, I go to New York City. 
I'm in, I live there. And I knock on the door of Club Med. I walk in and the receptionist says, can I help you? I said, who's in charge of your entertainment? Now, I'm ballsy. I have no idea how, what I'm doing, right? No resume, nothing. I said, who's in charge of your entertainment? He says, John Shelley. I said, really? I said, can I see him? He said, well, do you have an appointment? I said, no, no, but he's going to want to see me. Now, I did that be not because of what I wanted, but I thought that in my, in my head, the, the entertainment they did was not very American oriented. It was very French. And it was, I thought I could help them. How weird is that? I'm 26. I thought I could help this company. And so I, I was, yeah. so I'm next thing I'm sitting in his office and he says, well, how can I help you? And I said, I can help you. I have this idea, this idea, and this idea. And he's looking at me like, how did, how did you get in here? Who are you? And I said, da, 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 da. And he said, wow. Um, and then he said, could you go to Mexico, Sonora Bay for three weeks? Sure, I, I don't have a job. What, sure, what do you want me to do? He said, well, the entertainment department there is kind of falling apart and I think you could help him. All I know is I talked myself into a job. When I got there, the president of, of Club Med came down to meet me because I changed everything. No one gave me permission to do this. I just had a dream. And I just didn't think about the rules. I just became unstoppable. I don't always do that, but that particular one turned into a very life-changing career move for me. So I asked people, what's keeping you? The truth is you asked other people's opinions. Well, should I do that? What do you think? I don't care what people think. I just never did. What do you want? Don't hurt people, but go for what you want. How does that sound to you? I'm so. And I hear you often say, don't wait for these circumstances to be perfect before you take action. And this is just underlines your, your living proof, you living by what you preach. And this is wicked. Do you know the, you know, people say, Farbridge, why do you do all this? Because I can't wait to share these freaking stories. I have. You've got so many. Oh my God, you have no idea. Yeah. I looked at the app. I could tell you stories all day long and I, I can give you video. I gave Kim <laughs> Kardashian who's starting. I just want to tell these stories because for like 30 years, they were just my, there's no social media. I didn't tell this to anybody. I just did what I did. And I hoped that one day somebody would find out about the really cool things I did because it goes on and on. It goes on how I created my own fitness product and how I had to fight US customs. Yes, spin gym. I mean, I can go on. Show us how it works. All right. So, well, wait, I don't, let's close down one subject. So yes. the, the big takeaway from this for your audience is it's okay to dream. It's okay to have nobody believe in your dream because here's an important thing. No one ever believes other people's dreams. Bad. Christopher Columbus was going to, he, he was going to fall off the end of the earth. Everybody in Spain knew that that was a one-way death. Nobody thought that he could find something, but he did. Maybe Isabella. So maybe you find one person to believe in you. But if, if other people go, no, think about it. Nobody's giving Elon Musk permission to buy Twitter, go to the moon. They're just not giving, he's just going, I've got a vision. Your job then becomes that one, you believe it. And two, with this pitching skill that I teach to enroll other people into your vision. And then you got to follow through, you got to be committed and you got to see it to the end because here's a funny thing. Every once in a while, the dream doesn't work and you learn a lesson and that's okay too. Yeah. Awesome. What I wanted to also just to drill a little bit more on when you said, you know, people are scared of success. You hear it all the time. People want it, yet the opportunity comes, shows up. I know I do it. I know I do it. I'm guilty as charged. Wait, what do you do? The opportunities what, that. What do you do? I did design. I did design, so mainly design and podcasting, interior design. And the opportunity turns up. Okay. And you, so. This is big. Project is huge. Can I? Am I? Am I good enough? Is it going to happen? Am I going to disappoint anyone? You know, accountability, fear of failure, you name it, et cetera, et cetera. And yet procrastination you... kicks in. Oh, really? Mm. And then do it anyway. You know, once in a while, you break you through the uh, everything that you have to break through and you're going for it. But I'd like to hear your, what helps you to be this go-getter regardless of anything? And I know it comes with practice. It comes with, you know, you, 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 grow, you grow your balls. You become your James Bond. You, you, you get that out of you. 
And the more you do it, the better you become and the more confidence that you have. Someone who does get those nerves and let's say that fear of success on a grander level next. And it's, it, can, it kind of those steps up and up and up and every step up, you know, for some already what you have is already huge. For some, for you, you may want more, you may want bigger. You want to get to the next one. So there's always growth, isn't it? There's no ceiling. So how to break through to the next level? Write, to, write, write, this on, write this on your mirror and look at it every morning. You're going to die anyway. So who the fuck cares? <laughs> Literally, look at you. You're going to die anyway. Who the fuck cares? And I'm not, and I've never said that out loud before. You're the first person I've ever said that to. But as I'm thinking about <laughs> it, because I was talking to a whole bunch of people yesterday, I have a fear of success. Well, then guess what? Success is going to stay over there. It's going to go yeah, visit yeah. Oprah. It's going to go visit Beyonce. If you have a fear of it. So I do have a way out of this, by the way. And there's a reason that I am who I am. One, and I teach this not often enough, but I do a thing called breakthrough because the greatest thing I think that happened to me was when I was about 31 years old, I took my first transformational personal development seminar. I didn't even know those things existed. And here's the truth that you all need to know. Um, we all had a mom and dad. Now, whether you know them, you met them, they got killed when you were two, it doesn't matter. You have these two things that help make you and you have this feeling about them. And never, it's never justified, by the way, because it, you, what, the reason they had you is not the reason that you are here. And by the time that you even realize that you're here, you're already 10 years old. Like, oh, wow. Because I, I said to my kids, I said, do you remember all the things that we did when you were four or five? I took you to Disneyland. No, mom, really? Show me a picture. I don't remember. <laughs> wow, that's an interesting phenomenon as a parent. Why did I spend all that money on your first birthday party? You don't remember. Make good picture. <laughs> <laughs> but, reality but, check yes but i and i've spent 30 years doing this working on the brain hypnosis understanding how we think and i'm going to tell you it's almost impossible to move forward and write a beautiful future if you are stuck living in your past and we all have a past and oh, we all yes I, yes and one of the problems in life this fear of success comes from when you were a kid somewhere you did something and somebody squished a dream now you are letting your four-year-old drive your car today? Well, that seems like a stupid idea, but you would think you have no choice. You have a choice. A couple of things. Number one, your memories aren't real. They're just not. They're what you think they are. So you're going to tell me a story about being born in Ukraine, growing up in Siberia. Tell me a, an incident that happened. It's not real. It's what you think happened. And then not only did you think it happened, you made decisions about life based on that and you carry those with you they are changeable for example two clients when they're kids they both fall out of a tree both boys they break their leg the first one people come rushing over not a family member they take him to the hospital his conclusion about life is good samaritans will always help you he becomes a pastor the other kid falls out of a tree no parents strangers come to help him he's in the hospital screw mom and dad there's never there and you can't trust anybody to be there he became a drug addict same exact memory, falling out of a tree, breaking your leg, but the conclusion will, is what drives you. So mm -hmm. then you've got to go back and go, okay, what decisions did I make about life when I was too young to remember I made them? It's like opening Pandora's box. You're like, oh, wow. And guys, I'm going to share this with you for everyone listening. Every one of you has this moment. I've met a very small percentage of people who have a very positive first memory. What happens, the way the brain is wired is a lot like a computer screen. You have files in your head. The files, if I said high school, you pull up a file. If I said tundra, you pull up a file. If I said boy, first kiss, you have files for everything. Some of them are corrupted. If there's a corrupted file in your computer and you don't get rid of it, it eats away at the computer, it slows down your hard drive, and eventually it stops working. You're the same way. And the crazy thing about trauma is trauma lights up a big file with a big bow on it and sticks it in the front of your computer screen. How hard would it be to see your, your email if there was always like a big file in the mail? You're like, could you get that out of there? That's what happens in your head. It, and you can feel it. You're like, man, that's like you said, I need to get rid of this because that file is now not leaving the screen. But it's very, it's very easily erased if you have the right software, the right computer, the right system to do that. That is one of the things that I teach in Breakthrough because I think there's a healing that will go on. And so when you ask about why I do what I do now, number one, I've been through this. I've been teaching this for 30 years. 
Every time I teach it, I go through my own little mini breakthrough. And I am such a different person than I was just five years ago. I get goosebumps. Good. I'm hoping that your really entire resonates. Life, you know, yeah. it, it resonates because it's the ultimate truth. I am, I don't know when I will start to really promote this right now. I'm still promoting my pitch training and other things I'm doing. But when yeah, I yeah. look at the modern, uh, first of all, mental wellness, but I look at the modern um, therapy bullshit and I, I don't have a PhD. I don't want people to come running after me going, what do you, I do have a doctorate, but um, I think there should be a paper out there that says secrets therapists don't want you to know. Freud and Jung had their head up their ass. Get off the couch that you've been on for two years and start living your life. But it's funny that this is what came out in this interview because it's not about you and me. There's a person listening right now who wishes they had access to this, right? So they That's could, right. Find, yeah, it's it's coming. Just stay tuned. I, I have, there's, Guys, you have to write the books. You have to not procrastinate. You have to do the work. I teach courses every Sunday at five o'clock. I teach a two hour live training. Uh, I've been doing that since COVID hit called Pitch Secrets Masterclass. Um, I hold workshops and seminars and trainings. And apparently there's only 24 hours in the day. I sleep about six to seven of them. I like to kiss my husband for about one or two of them. Go to the gym. <laughs> there's only so many hours left in the day. <laughs> well, let's, let's get back to you because you're helping so many. And you are doing so much and you are an expert in so many areas and whatever you touch turns into gold. And you've already mentioned so many different dimensions that you managed to progress for yourself and, and create something invaluable, something life-changing for many. What do you think your needs are? Who meets your needs and how, how do you operate in day-to-day -day life? Number one, if you knew that you could affect change in other people so they don't suffer like you did. I watched my parents both suffer and die at a very early age, and it was really sad. I watched people around me suffer all the time. I have a wicked intuition. I can look at a Zoom room full of people and make people cry like that. And it's a strange talent um, because I see and hear things that other people don't. Between the words you use, the way you talk, the way you sit, the way you communicate, partly studying being an actress all these years allowed me to understand the human psychology. Uh, mm -hmm. And then what changed for me, number one, I have two beautiful children who just turned 20. I knew when my twins hit 18, I had them when I was late at 42 years old, that I was not going to spend all this time and energy devoted to anyone else other than my family. So for 18 years, I sold lots of products. I did lots of things. I got lots of awards and made tons of money, but I raised two babies who, as I went to breakfast with my 20 year old son, who's still hugging me in public, who says, mom, you were the best He's mom ever. I wanted that. I wanted to be known as the best mom ever to my two children. And I am, I am. They both, wow, and I'm going to cry. Um, but they know mm -hmm. how hard it was. I took them on outrageous vacations. We walked the Great Wall of China. We skied in Italy. These were things my parents could have never afforded. We afforded, you know, uh, campgrounds going on the way to Disney World when I was growing up. But I looked at my movie and said, I want this for my kids and I live that. We've had beautiful, oh my gosh, you know, we've gone horseback riding and dude ranches and skiing in mountains. Mom, you are the best mom. Doesn't get, there's nothing else I can do now to be a better mom. I did it. And I remember saying mm -hmm. to the universe that when they were old enough, when they're 18, I'm going to take this energy and love on other people. It's been two years and it's been, now, the other beautiful thing that happened was for many years, I didn't like me. I was angry at me. I was lonely. I had, I had an abusive relationship that I stayed in because you get what you tolerate. Um, and I wanted to be in love. And I had to heal me enough to be attractive enough to somebody else for them to love me. Now, what's cool about this is that the way that this man loves me is exactly what I want and now feel that I deserve. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, I, I couldn't have put that together before before I did all this personal work. And so I look at other people and go, would you like to be this happy? I know how I did it. And I look at, and are you married, single mom? Where are you and all that? I'm married. I've got two kids, five and seven, two girls. Oh, it's the best time. Take more pictures than you would ever imagine. And I have some secrets for raising kids, by the way. I'm happy to share that with you. I teach my little parenting secrets. You know, well, I have, I, have a parent, I have a parenting secret on how to teach them to share and how to say I love you. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. 
Let me go back to me for a second. Please share. Gosh, we, all the moms want to hear and dads. In fact. I, I know. Well, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to brag for one quick second. So I said to myself, you know, how do you, if you love you and you're in a good place, how do you attract, what do you want? That's an interesting question. You should all, all of you write down, what do you want? You'd mm-hmm. be surprised what you want. I have a whole, what do you want game that we play? And I wanted someone who was amazing. My ex-husband is six foot six, big old Notre Dame football player, popular, amazing kind of guy. And I said, what do you want this time? Well, I want someone who loves me the way I want to be loved. And then I, as I was working with students and said, wow, what do you really want? I said, you know, fuck it. Excuse my French. I want, I want Disney. I want Disney. I want, I want Prince freaking charming. I, <laughs> I know. And then I, and I, why, why wouldn't you, you want got it? Well, then I said, somebody said, well, what do you really want? I, said, I want a guy who looks like he walked off the cover of a romance novel. I kept thinking about it. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've seen him guys, but this is my husband. <laughs> I blush a little bit. <laughs> I blush. Like, I can't yeah, look at it. That's, I mean, there are times when I look at Joshua and I am just freaking blown away. My dude. <laughs> You're mine. You are a hundred percent mine. I lo- I mean, and he, he's 17 years younger. He is the most wonderful, loving human being who's got a great story. I, I go start to cry about how much I love him, but something happened. So he's this great physical specimen, right? Two years ago, as I'm going to get to this picture, he was in a horrific motorcycle accident and he shrunk down to this. Maybe because, mm-hmm. well, the universe needed to teach him, say, look, he has a way that he builds muscle. He, this was taken mm-hmm during COVID, he said to me, when the gyms open up, I'm going to go back. I, I didn't get the title of Mr. Olympia that I want. And I'm like, Joshua, look at you. You're already in your forties. Stop. What are you doing? Well, this is the before. This is less than a year later. And then he went on. He still, he shattered his ankle. He'll never walk right. He's always in pain now, but these are after his accident. What he built back. That's a picture he sent me. He went on to win two medals. Right this is him. I got to tell you, the other week, we went to Las Vegas, probably for his last competition. Let me get to it. He took that picture himself, and he won two medals in the Mr. Olympia competition at 45. Wow. Did it. He is, <laughs> he is the most committed man. He also is a photographer and a videographer, and I own a TV studio and was not really doing all that. And we are this awesome, dynamic team who can also lie in bed for an entire weekend and binge watch TV and do nothing because we're just in love. And we say, and we, and it's something that I wanted my whole life. I didn't get it. till I was 57, five years later, it's like, I still look at him and I just go, dude, I, my only regret is that we're not going to have children together. And I would love, he's got a boy and a girl. I've got a boy and a girl, but we didn't make ours. So in our next life, we're going to make sure that we, we decided we're going to find each other and make some babies. It's very romantic. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm watching a movie. There must be a movie. Forbes, there must be, there must be a movie based on your life because I've just in the second I just got into the whole <laughs> behind the camera mode. This is awesome. Well, it's even okay. You deserve it. Well, here's a scene from the movie. So, how did you find Mr. Wonderful? Well, how did you I, find Mr. I Wonderful? I didn't. I didn't. I let the universe do what it does best. I'm in Las Vegas, typical Thursday night. I'm working on my little fitness product. I have a videographer in my hotel room doing a video. And he says to me, would you like to meet a Mr. A, 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 an Arnold champion? I'm like, no, I don't like bodybuilders. I'm good. He said, no, no, no. Come on. I said, they don't, like, they don't really like this product. No. And he said, no, no, no. I'm going to invite him anyway. So he knocks on the door. He shows up. He's young. He's handsome. And so what? I see lots of young, handsome men. I work in fitness, right? I've never gone mm-hmm. out in fact, I told my daughter who was in the other room, you do not go after a fitness model. Mm-mm-mm. They like three things, working out food and themselves. <laughs> they don't do it. And then don't do anything that has to do with motorcycles. Cause my cousin lost her leg when she was 17. Don't do motorcycles. He shows up very handsome. We leave. Don't, I don't think anything. I really don't think anything about it left to my own devices. Nothing would have happened. He finds me on social media, posts a picture says, I just met the most wonderful woman. Hopefully I get to do an infomercial with her, but I love her energy. Okay, we start to flirt on social media, on Instagram. Come on, seriously, I know what he wants. He knows I'm you know, a little bit older. I've got some money, I'm on television and he's a fitness model. Mm. Mm. So we flirt for three months. At some point, I think, well, fine. Why don't you just come out? I was in California at the time. He says, all right, I'll ride my motorcycle. I'm like, oh no, you have a motorcycle? 
he brought four hours. He comes out to my house in California. And here's the moment from a movie. He's wearing black leather. And I, he pulls up, he takes off the helmet and this leather jacket. And I'm like, because like, could somebody film? This is an ad. This guy was a Chippendale. <laughs> like, he was a fashion model. He's fitness. I'm like, somebody's got, this is, this is a movie. I, this is my. And this and, is your life. But now it gets, <laughs> now it gets better. So now he comes over and I says, look, what are you doing here? I said, cause it, you mm. know, we can have a fun one night stand. I get it. That's cool. And he gets, question. Up, gets down on his knees. I'm sitting on a couch, like the outdoor couch. And he looks at me and he says, you know, he says, I'm not very religious, but something told me that you need me. You know what? He was right. It was the most beautiful thing ever. Within a couple of months of us dating, he'd asked me to marry him. He's, uh, and he takes full credit for our relationship. Um, and he's the most extraordinary. Wow. I mean, it's, and, and he's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. You know, he has his own, all of the things that, you know, but he's perfect for me. Well, and you don't strike me like a person who needs perfect. I think you, you know, you know how to see good in people and you, don't, you know what you want, you know what you need. And he just turned up on your doorstep. Wow. <laughs> And it fits my story perfectly that I get to, I, you know what I do? And it's a joke because I've always been in the industry. I was a beauty queen, whatever. I, people say, oh, so show me a picture of your, of your, of your husband. And I'm like, well, if, I'll tell you what, I'll show you a picture. But if you don't say, wow, when I show it to you, I'll give you, a, <laughs> I'll give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I, I love this moment. I think this is like such a Forbes Riley moment. So um, <laughs> that's I, incredible. Isn't it though? Isn't it? It's, what's the what's the learning from from here? I did the work. I did the work. You did the work. I got rid of this the fear, the self loathing, the, the the bullshit from my past, which I had a fair amount that I was carrying. I do think you start to unload your baggage. Do you ever notice? Maybe you've done this or not, but I have a closet full of clothes. I have a lot of clothes, clothes from high school because I didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I like to hang on to some of my clothes. Whenever I go in there and I clear it out and I get rid of things that are no longer serving me mm -hmm. within a short period of time, something comes in even better to fill that space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you think about your head and your memories and you clear out the things that are no longer serving you, or you get rid of the people that no longer serve you, there is now space for something new to come in mm. because of the mm -hmm. breakthrough work that I've done over and over. I've taken thousands of people through this. I've heard stories that would blow your mind. I didn't know that people in nice neighborhoods were selling their daughters for five-year-olds to neighbors. I didn't know a lot of shit that I, and I've healed hundreds of people personally and then myself. Then there's room. You know, I was a martial artist for a long time. I got mugged in my early thirties in Los Angeles. I was walking to my car late one night and I had a small purse with me. I just was doing a play. Car comes by with five teenagers in it residential street, the car opens up and all of a sudden it was, this guy grabs my purse. I turn around. I'm thinking, oh, should I kick him in the groin? I go to kick him. He punches me. I'm like, I've never felt anything like that in my life. I pee all over myself. I'm freaking out. I start screaming, take the purse. Luckily they took the purse and not me. And the next morning traumatized because it doesn't matter how bad the trauma is traumatized. I went to a self-defense mm -hmm. class that I went to every night for four years and I kicked and punched anything I could find because I had to work out that aggression. And I got really good at martial arts. And then I kept going in martial arts and I did not just Taekwondo, but I did Aikido, I did Wing Chun. Man, I just, and what did that do? That made me fierce, it made me strong. I mean, I can kick and punch. I mean, I've gone through that. How many of you have done that? You whine about mm -hmm. shit. Now, I didn't want to have to go through all that, but I was pushed into a, a, a corner where I had to learn to physically freaking fight. I also learned every lesson of martial arts. I learned that when you walk into a room, you are there to learn, you bow. You respect the space. You respect the sensei, a man who's a master at what he does. You do not question him. He says, get down. You say, yes, sir. And you say, yes, sir, a lot. That's training that most people will never have. And mm -hmm. I push that to the limit. And I just, I keep going with that. I mean, every lesson that I learn, you take a cup, you go to a master, and your cup is full because you think you know everything, guess what? You can't add anything. So many people take new classes going, well, my coach said that.
bullshit. Empty your cup out so there's room to put something new in it if that's what you want. I and love I, that. <laughs> I went on this spiritual journey. I lived at an ashram. I ate vegetarian. I have done seva, which means that you clean bathrooms without talking to anybody because you want enlightenment. So I have gone through so much in an effort to evolve to whatever this life is about. And now it's 62. I'm unpacking as many lessons as I can. Maybe I should make people go through martial art training as I'm saying it, because that's one of the things that shaped who I am. It kind of goes after within your fitness environment. It goes as a next step. You can totally do that. Wow. Yeah. So incredible. How, how many movies well, are we incredible? Tell me, tell me. So everything that you say, you just incredibly, you know, the, the energy, the, the vibe, the presence, the commitment, the listening, the looking, everything is just so warm. It's just so in this conversation. And I applaud you. And this is for me as interviewer, a very special experience. I'm very humbled and so grateful. Now, you the queen of the perfect pitch as well. So I wanted to touch on your commercial success as well. You've generated $2.5 billion in sales. Mm -hmm. You are known as a billionaire business strategist. Talking about the perfect pitch and how you help other businesses to flourish, how you help other businesses to sell better than their CEOs can make them sell. Give us and my audience and myself, I'm learning here as, as we go so much, little nuggets into so just to highlights and then where people can learn more about it. When you hear the word pitch, what do you think? Someone's trying to sell you something, resistance. Great. And hang on to that and see how far that is. Suspicious, sus suspicious. Okay. Uh, right. And I, I, do, I probably don't need it, but someone's trying to get me. So, right. That, that's perfect. That's why I made all this money teaching pitch. Because you know what I think pitch is? Getting anyone and everyone to say yes whenever you want. I have a thing called mm -hmm. One Pitch of Millions. I have a thing called Ultimate Pitch Formula. I know something that you don't know. Watch this. And it's, it comes from my dad being a magician. I have here a, I have a prediction here, okay? One prediction. I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? If I, get this, if I get this right, you're going to sign up for Sunday class. Promise? Say yes? Yes. Okay. Natalia, would you like to see something cool? Yes. There's nothing on this side. There's one answer I knew you were going to say on this side. How did I know you were going to say that? That's the secret to what I do. I know the answer before I ask the question. Here's the big secret. Number one, you have to practice. Even if I gave you all the formula right now, wouldn't matter. It's like giving you a great recipe. It's like giving you a great piece of meat without the recipe or giving you the recipe without the meat or without the oven. You're like, wait a second, I need all the pieces. Yes, you do. That's why I teach this. I've been teaching this for two solid years. I've made so many millionaires because when you get someone to say yes, as opposed to selling them, they give you their credit card. They don't even know why. So, and then there's a couple, there's so many beautiful techniques about pitching. So I'll have another analogy for you. You ready? Just keep getting yeses. How many, clothes, how many clothes do you have in your closet? A lot. I'm married right? quite a bit. But, uh... Okay, do you know when to wear sweatpants versus an evening gown? Yes. Who taught you that? I think. Right, think about it. Think about the different, do you know when to wear a skirt versus a shirt versus a this? You have so many choices. Well, that's how I view pitching. There's, you, if you don't put the right pitch with the right moment, it doesn't work. Try wearing sweatpants to a wedding and only do that. You need, you only need to do that once, but here's how subtle that is. I once, no one told me this. It was a summer wedding. I wore a white dress. Oh my God, you're wearing white. I'm like, what's the problem? It's really beautiful. You can't do that. The bride's wearing white. No one taught me that. I never did it again. Same thing with pitching. You only need to screw up a couple of times. Like, wait, I need to learn how to do this right. And then practice it because you're always pitching somebody different. You're pitching somebody older or younger or male or female. Your pitch needs to change. Most of you don't do that. I hear people with the same pitch. So I, I relish this. I love this concept so much that I do. All right, here's how everybody can start. Is class free? No, it costs $19. I teach a class on Sunday for $19. You can meet me live on Zoom. You go to I'm, I'm encouraging everyone. Yeah, 
You go to www.pitchsecretsmasterclass. And if you can't remember that, go to my name, go to ForbesRiley.com. Everything is there. And the point of this is that I know something that you don't. So here's what I know. This is one, you can all write this down. Stop telling people what they need. If you can get the other person to want what you have, you both win. Five blitz questions to, okay. before you have to run. What's your favorite quote? You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Awesome. Love, love, love this. One superpower that you'd like to have. I think being invisible, my mother always wanted to, would be such a kick. I want, because people, I want to see the truth of what people are saying, to go in and out. Yeah, I think being invisible would be fun. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to visit Joshua all over the place. He's going to wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, I had the most amazing dream. I'm like, ha ha. Ha ha. Tasks you'd like to outsource. Oh my God, every freaking thing. I, I, outs- I already do. From <laughs> sure to cleaning, I don't do toilets. I want to have someone answer my email. I out everything. Someone else doing my makeup, picking out my clothes, styling my. Yeah, let me just do what I do. So pretty much everything that's yeah. Your dream place to live. Anywhere with Joshua. I am, and I'm not joking. I've traveled to Dubai. We're looking at Costa Rica. I love the water. I love the mountains. Anywhere with Joshua. Beautiful. Top choice for a famous house guest, and it can be current or historic. I just met, and I said this to him yesterday, Deepak Chopra. He's 76 years old. And what a beam of energy and love. And I said to him, I said, if I were choosing the person I want to have dinner with, alive or dead, number one, I'd like them alive. It's always a weird question. (laughs) Two, it would be you. I would love to have a meal and see how you just have this beautiful, graceful spirit. I've never met anyone like him. Forbes, shine bright. You've just... Blow me away, Joy is blowing all my listeners away. We're all going to be there, pretty sure. If yes. I, if I won't bring the, the gang with me on Sunday, um, we'll, we'll pop all the links in. Thank you so much for coming on to my podcast. And oh, you're allowed to, okay, so here's the offer. I also have a podcast. I want to know about my sister from the Ukraine. So we're going to meet. We're going to have this conversation. And so I'm going to send you an invite to come talk to me. Maybe this Wednesday at 2 o'clock, wait, if you can. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah, I just said yes. Us. We're going to fix your microphone though because you're not going to be happy after this. So I'm going to give you a big hug. I'm going to end this and I will talk to you very, very soon. You're a rock Please. star. All of us listening, guys, Thank go you. out there. Do you know what? Here's the secret to life give more than you get. I promise you'll get more than you ever imagined. I'm certainly a work in progress. If you've liked what I've done today or who I am, ForbesRiley.com. You'll see free gifts there. You'll see free links. Your host is a very beautiful woman and I'm excited to know more about her. Keep listening. Godspeed. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Beehive Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Bye now till the next episode. Look after yourselves and your loved ones.